Hello everybody, it's me, Andrew. This is going to be a walkthrough of the Tarot Decoratif, I do believe that's how you pronounce it, by um, Ciro Marchetti. Um, this deck was gifted to me by one of my amazing friends who had accidentally ordered two, and I am super excited about it. So what we are going to do, we're just going to walk through the deck and I want to show you some of the cards. Um, this is the box that it came in. It's a pretty thick box. Um, it comes in a bag. So it comes with a bag, praise the gods, with cups, swords, wands, and pentacles. And this is the back of it. Um, the cards are pretty big, actually. I was pretty surprised at how big the cards were. Um, I was actually pretty surprised at how big the box was. Um, I thought there was like a book making it big, but no, it's just the size of the cards and I love it. Um, so this is, there's a signed card by him. It's pretty cool. Um, this is the backing of the cards. So they are reversible if you choose to do that. Uh, we know that I do not choose to do that, but that is totally up to you. So I believe this is in Italian. Oh, I want to say it's Italian or French. I'm not exactly sure because <laughs> I literally have done zero research on this deck. On this deck, um, but I really like it nonetheless, and I know what the cards are, so I'm not that worried about it. So we have the Fool, the Magician, which I really like in this. I like that Magician, the High Priestess. The Empress. And if you if you know what language it is and you want to pop it below and just tell me, that'd be great. Because I probably could look it up, but I'm going to forget. The Lovers. I'll, it seems like there's either two girls fighting over a man or a man talking to two girls. Or maybe they're each one. I don't know. But you can see this one's wearing blue and this one's wearing red. So, ah, this is about making a choice. Which one? I like it. And there's no book with this deck, so um, I guess some knowledge of tarot is uh, beneficial. So we're basically going to do what I, um, what I used to do, is just look at the Major Arcana, um, the Aces, and the Nine of Cups, as well as maybe a few others, so Strength, the Hanged Man. The death card. I wonder why there's no title on this card. That's interesting. Temperance. The devil. It's a great devil card. The tower. Um, after the president was elected, which we're not even going to get into, um, Sierra Marchetti had a picture like this and it had Trump Tower on it like the people were falling from Trump Tower it was really funny and too bad it wasn't true but whatever the moon looks like Mary and Jesus the sun not too crazy about the sun card but I mean it's nice judgment is looks like a traditional judgment card the world alright so this is the ace of wands or batons I do want to point out here, though, that this deck, when it says three of wands, you literally see three wands. It is a little bit of symbolism from the traditional right away. So the focus is more on the wands rather than the image at the top. So, but you do see ships in the traditional three of wands, the four of wands. So yeah, it's it, I really like how he put the focus on that. Uh, this is his, oh, the Eight of Wands. I like that a lot. That's actually really pretty. Uh, let's see. The Ten of Wands. I like that. That's good. Let's see here. This Nine of Wands is actually amazing. He has, like, that fire in his eyes. Like, that's just amazing. And the Queen of Wands is the best queen in this deck. Look at, the, look at this. Look at her dress. I mean, the Queen of Wands is my favorite court card anyway, but... Like, just a freaking legit 
the King of Wands was a great team. This is the Ace of Coins or Deniers, Pentacles, whatever. So you can see it follows that same um, that same pattern. like that okay page the knight here I actually really I like the fact that maybe you can't see his legs here I, it kind of speaks a lot to the earthy element of him and how he's not really going anywhere the knight of pentacles is a knight that I'm very finicky about in my tarot decks because I often like for him to be stationary if he's charging forward in some in some sense I don't like it um, that's not what he represents to me. And the Queen of Pentacles, King of Pentacles. Alright, Ace of Swords. You can see these are very much have the traditional symbolism in them. The Eight of Swords is actually amazing. I've been resisting using this deck because I really wanted to show it to you guys. The Knight of the Knight of Swords. So I, I've been walking past it. The Queen of Swords is my second favorite court card, and she looks amazing. This is the Knight of Swords. Just amazing. It also kind of looks very mechanical behind her, which honestly seems like the way she thinks, very logically, very mechanically. And this is the cups. And the two of cups I love because not only is it a gay couple, it's an interracial gay couple. So like he was like, wham, bam. Love it. And then at the end, after I show you these cards, we'll shuffle one. And we'll see what we get. The Nine of Cups, I like. Um, not my favorite Nine of Cups, honestly. Um, but I like it. I, I get it. The Nine of Cups. You can see how, like, romantic. Out of all the knights in the deck, like, he's the most tame one as far as his coloring. He's very, uh, he looks very subdued. He doesn't have legs either. I wonder if that's a thing. The Queen of Cups is gorgeous, like the goddess Aphrodite in the King of Cups. Cool. So, let us... Ah, shit. Let us shuffle and let us draw a card. And I'm basically trying to ask what guidance we all need. No matter when we're watching this, you know, if you're watching it today or you're watching it a year from now, you know, I want to make sure that the guidance that comes through is meant for you. And this is the card that we have. The Ten of Pentacles or Coins or Deniers, whatever you want to call it. So this is a card telling you that you have all the resources that you need available. You have all the money. You have all the time. The only thing that is separating you is that veil of thought. When you think you don't have something, you're not going to have it. When you focus your priorities and when you shift your mindset to know that you have everything, then you're going to be noticing opportunities and you're going to be noticing things where you feel more abundant. My mentor and teacher, Gabby Bernstein, says, when you feel abundant, ab abundance comes. So this card is saying, don't feel like you don't have enough because when you feel like you don't have enough, you're never going to have enough. So know that you are abundantly provided for, that all of your needs are met. So whoever it is, whenever you're watching this, know that this card is meant for you. All right, guys, if you would like to book a reading with me, um, even if you would like for me to use this deck, if you really like it, you can actually tell me in the notes when you check out. But you can go to, be, to my website below, tarotangel444.com. You can also follow me on Instagram at tarot, T-A-R-O-T, with Andrew, A-N-D-R-E-W. And we can chat. And if you have any questions about any services that I offer, feel free to email me at andrewbarker at tarotangel444.com. And if you would like to become a certified angel tarot reader, um, which is one of the best classes I've taken, um, you can do that at the link below as well. I'm actually super excited to be 
able to share that with you guys. I love you, and I will be seeing you soon. Love and light. Bye.